everybody and welcome to Friday Apocryphal Podcast, your one-stop shop for everything Friday Apocryphal and Podcast, and boy do we have a show for you today. Today we are covering the Alphabet of Ben Sira, chapters 1 through 11. You know what? That, that, that's fine. That's fine. Ben is a weird, or the Alphabet of Ben Sira is a weird book, um, because even though this is our second episode of the Alphabet of Ben Sira, uh... We are now just now getting into chapter one because yes. that that acrostic poem at the beginning, or you know, it's not it, it's a sad excuse for a poem. The acrostic at the beginning, well, you know, sort of an intro when as a well. female comes yeah. forth from the belly of her mother into the air of the world, the heavens, the earth, the stars, and the constellations, everything that's been created in the world mourn that this has happened. Yeah, obviously, the universe is very upset that uh, a. Uh, a female child has been born. <laughs> yes. How does Ben Sira propose to propagate? Yeah, actually, the other dude brought that up. Yeah, that yeah. They're necessary. And he, he, yeah, yeah. And he was like, "You're you're blinded uh, by something." And like, I, I I forget how how it went exactly, but he was like, "Ah, oh, you poor man." And then he didn't like really address this. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Today. We're reading from rabbinic fantasies, imaginative narratives from classical Hebrew literature, edited by David Stern and Mark J. Mursky. And I think this translation was by them, I th- I think, unless it's by... Oh, no, the translation's by Norman Bronsnick, David Stern, and... Mark J. Mursky. Okay, so they were they were part of they were some of the translators. They were sixty six percent of the translators. Also, on the cover, it just has the initial J, but in here, it has his full middle name as J, which is J A Y. He's got the whole Homer Simpson thing going. That's yeah. pretty good. Uh, by the way, today we're going to be covering Lilith, and if you haven't seen. My video on Lilith, Lilith and Myth and History. Uh, hopefully you watch that after the show, but I'm going to be talking a lot about Lilith today because it's a very interesting topic. You know, she was Adam's first wife. How about you shut the fuck up and how about we hop you in? You know, she was in Genesis 1-1. How about we, how about we start reading? They kicked reading? her out of heaven because she wanted to be on top. Oh, is that how it worked? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see what uh, Ben Sira has to say about it. Mm. Because Ben Sear was there. Yeah, obviously. Mm-hmm. All this, right. This one-year-old was like nigh on omnipotent. I think so. he's like seven now, isn't well, he? Well, yeah, it's been some time. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. still OP. And he's he's in the court of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar is yes. going to be asking him questions after he answered the Oyvay 21 Oyve of question. them, right? Yeah. Or 22 questions? 21 or 22? Uh, 22, like I think. Yes. So, yeah, it was a weird 22. number. So let's hop into it then. Chapter one. First... He asked him how he had shaved the hare's head because he had shaved that rabbit's head. Yeah. With a lime solution, Ben Sira answered. Of what kind? Ben Sira replied, a depilatory solution of lime composed of lime and arsenic. Wow. Dude, that... That's going to kill that thing. Is this... Okay. Is this, uh, I hope that's not how they shaved anything. Haven't you ever used an arsenic shaving cream? <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I have it, but... You, you know, know something. I, I do have to shave. I guess uh, so, some arsenic couldn't hurt. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Just don't nick yourself or get it in any open area like your mouth. Or yeah, something. I'll have to be very, very careful. Just be real careful. Yeah. Lime, too. <laughs> yeah, lime. I mean, we're not talking about the, um, the fruit. We're talking about lime. From limestone. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. This the, is worse than I thought, but you're right. It's probably referring like, like to Like limestone? That. Well, it just says lime. Okay, so then it that's could a, just as well be that's ground up, lime. That's ground up stone. That's could, lime. Okay, I, I could be Trust either one. Me, it's a requirement for building. So for, like cement, it's a requirement. Okay, for, is that making c- cement here? Well, it's still a, like a powdery component that you could use for other things. I think it's an alchemical component in, like, magics as well. I'm not saying you can't use that, uh, but I am saying that it it could as well be a fruit. 
Surely. Surely you can eat that. Solomon used his wisdom to invent this solution in the days of your mother, <laughs> the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> So apparently Nebuchadnezzar is the son of the Queen of Sheba. Wow. Did you know that? No. And also the the timeline, once again, is horrible. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, That doesn't seem right. (laughs) No. When she came bearing gifts to Solomon in order to observe his wisdom, he found her very attractive and wanted to sleep with her. But Solomon discovered that she was very hairy. (laughs) So this passage, (laughs) there's a note. This passage is clarified in the light of a well-known rabbinic tradition, according to which the Jewish woman, up to the time of Isaiah when they became sinful, had virtually no pubic hair, B. Sanhedrin 21a. Interestingly enough, one who has coitus with a woman with pubic hair is viewed as risking castration by having his genital organ become entangled in the hair, Hmm. Sanhedrin 21a and Gitin 6b, the Talmud interprets the phrase Pathain Yehore, Isaiah 3.17, to mean that as a result of the woman's sinfulness, God will a forest with her with hair their pubic regions. Uh, this is from B Shabbat 62b. For this reason, as well as for the sake of beauty, women in Talmudic times were in the habit of shaving their pubic hair. B Nazir fifty nine A. Okay. Um well, I mean, I, So they yeah. thought that their dicks were gonna get caught? Yeah, they'll get tangled up and you'll get castrated. Wow. <laughs> he took <laughs> lime and arsenic, minced the lime by hand with a knife. Okay, so it is the fruit. Yeah. Uh, crushed the arsenic and mixed them together in water, and so made a depilatory solution of lime. Then he smeared her with the solution and bathed her, and the hair fell off. He had intercourse with her right away. And she said to Solomon, I did not believe all these things until I saw them with my own eyes. Uh, there's a note here. This line paraphrases 1 Kings 10.7, the statement the Queen Sheba makes to Solomon after she witnesses all the wonders of his court. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's kind of like Nair. Yeah. Oh, you guys didn't remind I'll everybody. This is all parody. Yeah, it's a parody. Ancient parody. It is, yeah. Medieval parody. Very old parody. But, but it's still, apocryphal, it's solid. It is a parody. solid parody. Yeah. Some people took it seriously at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar asked Ben Sira, how do you know all this? I'm a prophet, he answered. The Holy One, blessed be he, reveals to me all that is unknown. That's nice. End of chapter one. Now we're in chapter two. Since they're short, you're going to probably keep going, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If what you say is true, itemize all the trees in my garden. There are 30 kinds of trees in your garden. Kinds? <clears throat> uh, dun, dun, dun. So there's a note here. There are many variants in the manuscripts in the naming of the trees. And there's difficulties in ascertaining the identities of some of them. The translation follows, in the main, Emmanuel Lowe, De Flora der Juden. Uh, the text on which this translation is based lacks the name of one of the trees in the second category. The text also includes translations of the names into Judo Arabic. Uh, or Arabic. So, Arabic. so are we uh, about to get a list of trees? Yes. Oh, oh man. <clears throat> Fantastic. Is I love the lists. In there? If the larch is in there, I'm... Gotta be amused. The fruits of ten are eaten as they are. Apples, figs, sycamore fruits, citrons, grapes, quinces, pears, terebinth berries, peppers, and lemons. In another ten, only their insides are eaten while the outside is discarded. Pomegranates, nuts, almonds, pistachios, pignolias, melons, poppy seeds, coconuts, quermans, and in the last ten, only their outside are eaten Dates, olives, carobs, peaches, crab apples, jujubes, plums, cherries, medlars, and sevastans. The king asked. Well, now, now I'm I'm just glad that uh, now I know how to eat all my fruits. Oh yeah, like medlars. D- yeah, <laughs> and, and, par- and dairy plants and caramens and caramens. Yeah, love it. Yep. The this king, is educational. So the king asked, "Who planted them?" 
Adam took them from the Garden of Eden. Wow. He did not go out from there until he took them with God's permission. He also took all kinds of spices and medicines, 30 types. Okay, so he's getting kicked out of the garden. He's like, hey, God, can I please uh, take like some some seeds from all these trees? And spices and medicines? Yes. For Great. whatever reason. Yep. Because maybe there were no other trees. <laughs> the king exclaimed, Either you saw them in my garden or someone told you about them. That's the end of chapter two. I guess I'll do chapter three and then okay. hand it off to you. <laughs> sure. Um, chapter three. If you wish, Ben Sira replied, blindfold me. Go out with your troops, divide them into units, and I will tell you in which unit you are to be found. Nebuchadnezzar did this. He covered Ben Sira's eyes and left him with a guard who could be trusted. A unit passed with such noise and sounds that the earth quaked. The trustworthy guard asked, Is the king in this unit? Ben Sira replied, No. Another unit passed with great tumult and horsemen running on all its sides. The guard asked, Is the king in this unit? Ben Sira responded, No. A third unit passed with songs and every kind of music. Is the king here? The guard asked. He is not, answered Ben Sira. Then a fourth unit passed in silence. Not even the footsteps of the horses could be heard, only a gentle stillness. Is he here? The guard asked. Yes, he's facing me, Ben Seer responded. They uncovered his eyes, and he saw the king standing right next to him. There's a note. Uh, check B. Barakot 58A, where the same story is told about the Talmudic sage, Rabbi Sheshet. Okay, so he's, is he then making fun of that guy then? I guess. That's what, it's, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> Tell me how you penetrated this great secret, the king asked to Ben Sira. He replied, You so prided yourself on your kingship that you compared yourself to God about whom it is said, Behold! Be- behold! Be- behold. <laughs> God passes with the sound of a gentle stillness, First Kings 19.11-12. through 12. There, the king of kings is seen sitting on a high and lofty throne. Are you likening me to your God? asked Nebuchadnezzar. Nothing about you resembles him, Ben Sira answered, except that in your arrogance and enormous insolence you compared yourself to the kingship of God, therefore his wrath is upon you. If his wrath is upon me, why did he exalt and magnify me in the world and place everything beneath my authority? Good question. Good question. Ben Sira replied, If the Holy One, blessed be he, wishes to humiliate someone... He first elevates and then lowers him. As it is said, should you nest as high as the eagle, from there I will pull you down. Jeremiah 49, 16. So uh, this, is, uh, this is interesting. Okay, so when we were reading you know, biblical stuff, the narrative was like, okay, the, the Israelites have sinned uh, like a lot. So the enemies, the Babylonians are going to act as God's agents to, you know, bring punishment to the Israelites. That's how it was portrayed. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess if if someone back then held this viewpoint, they'd be pretty chill because like, oh, don't worry. They're just doing the. Okay, so who's the winner and loser in that situation? Like, no, is nobody the winner and loser? Uh, God wins. Oh, no, no. Who's the winner? God, who says there's a winner? It's a war. Well, not it's not exact. It's not quite a war, but still, you know, there what are I mean? no winners at war. Oh, okay, F- fair enough. Uh, well, there's a funny bit coming up. Uh, the king at once responded, "If you become my son-in-law and take my daughter as a wife, I will make you king in my place." I am a human being, Ben Sira answered. I cannot marry an animal. For wow. it is said their flesh is the flesh of asses. Ezekiel twenty three twenty. Uh hold on. Let's check Ezekiel twenty three twenty. Let's check Ezekiel twenty three twenty. So is he saying that the flesh of a woman is like the flesh of asses? I think he's talking about the Goyim. Uh, oh, okay. I see you know what? That makes sense, right? Because uh Desra and Nehemiah. Uh so Ezekiel is after yeah, Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ezekiel twenty three twenty. Yes, is that what that was? Okay, mm-hmm. here's our our handy dandy Bible. 
because this is what uh, atheists uh, have on hand all the time. 2320. Uh, so starting at 2319, yet she increased her whoring, remembering the days of her youth when she played the whore in the land of Egypt and lusted after her lov- lovers there. Uh, whose members, oh, okay, this is that verse. Yes. Whose members were like those of donkeys and whose issue was like that of horses. Thus, you longed for the lewdness of your youth when the Egyptians handled your bosom and pressed your young breasts. Uh, I, 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 I see how that's tangentially related, but he's not saying the, the thing that uh, he says he's saying. No. No. So maybe that's the joke. It it is a joke. <laughs> He's calling Classic. Hey, hey buddy, he got you. Yeah, he got you, me. You know, seven hundred years later he got you. <laughs> yeah. Need your luck. <laughs> when the king heard Ben Sira abusing and reviling the nations of the world, he became very angry and asked his wise men, Tell me what we can secretly feed him so as to make him die. We do not know, they answered. The king immediately put them to death. That's the end of chapter wow. three. Okay. Uh, maybe that arsenic that he mentioned earlier would help. Yeah, yeah, that arsenic. Uh, you know, but it's really just there for shaving. I'm going to grab some more coffee. Yeah. All right. Uh, Why so don't you guys share, comment. Yes. Uh, you know what? We have a lot of great stuff that you could do, like uh, subscribe and drop a like if you haven't. Uh, all that stuff, share, share the link around, you know, maybe you want, uh, your friends and family, definitely your friends and family to see, uh, us talk about this book. Maybe you want to see the like, share and sub go over Lawrence's face like this. Yeah. Maybe you'd want that. Yeah. Hello. You like that. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. All right. So let's hop into chapter four then. Yes. Then he said to Ben Sira, let me ask you about something. If you tell me, I'll give you silver the weight of a buffalo and no end of gold. I have a friend, a friend, quote unquote, whom I hate even though he loves me. I wish to kill him in a way he won't suspect, say with the food he might eat and then die from having eaten. (laughs) Wow, I love how you're reading that. That that is like... (laughs) Pretty like, funny. You no, know, just so uh, if there's a way to poison this guy, that'd be great. It's too straightforward, but like, damn, that yeah. actually might be. It. I got a, fr- I got a friend. I like uh, how he's asking the seven year old this when, like, like a mob boss uh, guy. Yeah. Apparently, nobody else who he had in his employ knew anything about poison. What about the dudes he just killed? Oh, I guess he must have just cut off their heads. Well, they don't know how to kill, obviously. That's why he was so mad, because they didn't know how to kill. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ben Sira immediately realized that he was the one the king wished to kill. I will tell you a parable, he said. Nimrod had an exceedingly beautiful horse. Of course, Nimrod was the hunter, right? Yeah, he was a great hunter. They not much up, else. Bring up his horse. Yeah, well, they brought up like nothing about so him. So in the Bible, not much is said about him. But in the literature of the region, um, there are some stories about Nimrod being the head of a city. Mm. And there are like stories about interactions between him and Abraham, at least in the Islamic tradition that ah, I've heard of. Gotcha. Not in the Quran, I think, but in supplemental literature. The other horses said to it, let us cut off your head and we will give you a house full of straw and barley. Ah, they're trying to fool this horse. See, the, the unsuspecting horse will be dead and will not appreciate all the stuff that they would give. Surely not. Yeah. The horse. <laughs> I love this. The horse <laughs> who was clever. <laughs> Smart horse. <laughs> Man, I was just reading like the, the stats for horses. They have three N or less. Oh my They're God. so dumb. They're like, this is Mr. Ed. So yes, this is a talking horse, clearly smarter. Uh, the horse who was clever understood what they wanted him to do and said, fools, 
If I let you cut off my head, who will eat the straw and barley? <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the problem with that horse. Oh, yeah. Well, we've had talking <laughs> animals in the Bible, right? We had that talking donkey. Yeah, yeah. I think that was in Kings, right? Uh, that was in Numbers. Numbers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's riding the donkey, and then yeah, the donkey's like, "Stop that shit, man!" Yeah, I want to do some more stuff about uh Balaam. Yeah, if pair, uh, because I read a interesting uh article mm. about Balaam. What was it about? Uh, basically the uh the other the character that. It was based off of like an an ancient Near Eastern, uh, figure. Okay. Uh, so it was uh, I, f- I forgot who actually wrote it. Maybe I think it was, maybe it was Thomas L. Thompson. Might have been him. All right, I'm gonna continue here. Speaking of which, we mentioned uh, epilepsy last time. Yeah, and I was combing through some papers on the uh, APA database, and apparently there is a strong correlation between being epileptic and holding mystical beliefs. I can't say I'm surprised. I'm not going to say one necessary one doesn't necessarily cause the other, but I'm not surprised that there is a correlation. Yeah. It, there's quite a few correlations between mystical experience and being, you know, more susceptible to uh just the environment and it, it manipulating how you feel or or what you could perceive like yeah, well, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's. I'm sure there's correlations between mystical experiences and neurological abnormalities in yeah. general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean it's as mundane because then as they wouldn't be as mystical, right? If they weren't like uh, there's a there wasn't something fan different that was at a at a science yeah. lab that that was you know when it was on, people thought that they saw things in the room, and apparently the the waves of the you know the fan blade mm-hmm. did literally were at the pattern length for most people's eyes and so it did in fact distort people's vision oh, okay like like there. like a frame rate or like something a fr- yeah it literally distorted yeah. their vision but it didn't affect people with astigmatism so a lot of scientists have glasses and it didn't affect them and they were like we don't know what you're talking about we've been <laughs> here so the science you know <laughs> they, you're all crazy you're all crazy exactly you know what so. else is crazy the rest of the story let's hear it all right uh, so fools if I let you cut off my head, who will eat the straw and barley? Similarly, you desire to kill me. But if you kill me, who will get the silver and gold, the weight of a buffalo? Uh, so this is, of course, Ben Sira talking to Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, so, yeah, he saw through his transparent. Yeah, boy yeah. Very easily. I swear by the life of Shamosh. Remember that one? Shamash? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that I will not kill you, said Nebuchadnezzar. And if you know uh, if you know anything about uh, Shamash in the Bible, not real big fans of him. So, then I will tell you, Ben Sira said, give him egg yolks without salt to eat for 10 days and he will die. The king thought that he was lying so he brought a man and fed him the egg yolks and the man died the king said to ben sira if you eat this in my presence i will let you go um uh, uh, wow uh, <laughs> salmonella man yeah uh i cannot eat what you prepare with your hands ben sira said let me prepare it myself and i'll eat it what did Ben Sira do? He hid some salt and ate it with the egg yolks for a whole month. Why did you lie to me? Asked the king. I made thin slices out of the yolks, answered Ben Sira. I crushed them a bit and put something in them. Now, there are a few notes here. Uh, multiple notes. Yeah. Yeah, there are multiple notes. Uh, so I... That... that not gonna lie the passage is a little bit out there like i just don't know why that is significant uh because he had salted eggs oh wow uh (laughs) exactly i don't know either in the ben uh yehuda dictionary 
The Hebrew word kalshit is rendered as a thin solution, which is uh, co- contradicted, not contradicted, contradicted. I've noticed a few typos. Okay, maybe it's maybe it's supposed to be contradicted. Uh, maybe it's supposed to be concentrated. Maybe I don't know. Uh, by the use of the plural as well as by the statement that follows in the text that he crushed them an act that is hardly applicable to a solution our rendering of this uh hapax legamemnon or sorry legamena i can't even talk Sweet. legamenon yeah i don't know uh has its basis in a geonic and that's the the period that was that this was written in uh in a geonic use of the verb kelsh uh, which Ben Yehuda misinterprets to mean to spread, but as dictated by the context, means to split. And also, according to the Budapest manuscript, he put coriander and salt into the mixture. Oh, yeah, tasty. I'll, I'll, I'll go for some of that later. Yeah, you better go home after the show, get yourself some egg yolks, some coriander and salt. Yeah, I'll eat that. Yeah. All right. So I crushed them a bit and put something in them. The king immediately did the same, but he became ill. Cure me, he said to Ben Sira. Ben Sira, and this is where it starts getting interesting. Ben Sira wrote an amulet for the king, and he recovered. Why did you seek to kill me? He asked Ben Sira. The ancient proverb states, out of the wicked comes forth wickedness. 1 Samuel 24, 14. Ben Seer answered, If someone wishes to kill you, slay him first. Uh, that's not exactly what that verse was saying, but okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, and now, you might be curious no, man, as I'm to what, right. is, what is on this amulet. Yeah, I want to know what's on the amulet. Am- yeah, amulet. Why did I say amulet? What the hell is wrong with me? Amulet. All right. Uh, so this now we're going to chapter five, and we're going to have a little bit of an explanation here. Oh, we got some magic going on. Oh, it's it's you're going to love this. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is it like those Lilith amulets? Or? It's exactly that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, soon afterward, the young son of the king took ill. Said Nebuchadnezzar, heal my son. If you don't, I will kill you. Ben Sira immediately sat down and wrote an amulet with the holy name and he inscribed on it the angels in charge of medicine by their names, forms, and images and by their wings, hands, and feet. Nebuchadnezzar looked at the amulet. Who are these? The angels who are in charge of medicine. Uh, and these are uh, transliterated differently a lot. There's Senoi, Sensenoi, and uh, and. Uh, Samungaluf, those those are just some ways to transliterate it. They have been transliterated, you know, a whole bunch of different ways. I don't recall those angels popping up in any of the yeah, Apocrypha or dudes? the Bible. Yeah. So these are just random names. Well, uh, f- from as far as I can tell, yes. But let's see what uh, the note that well, he has it, on it says. Those are their parody names. That You know, perhaps they are their parody names. I don't know. Uh. Either way, let's see what he has to say. Uh, Oh, okay. So for an analysis of these names, which make their first recorded appearance in this work. Okay. And he he references uh, Joshua Trenktenberg's Jewish magic and superstition. Uh, According to him, these names were probably pronounced as, oh, okay. Uh, Sanvi, Sun, Sanvi, and uh, Semangalov. Uh, they were portrayed in amulets as birds, a sample of which is used as an illustration on the soft cover edition of his book. It was customary in Eastern Europe to post these names on, yeah, on the walls of the room in which the newborn slept to protect it from demonic harm. Uh, so yeah, these, uh, these pop up a lot. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have one of these amulets. Like, like when uh, my mom was giving birth, she had one of these amulets and they had a whole bunch of, of weird birthing traditions, but the whole thing is it was to protect the child from Lilith. That's where it started. And now here is where we're getting into the Lilith story that these angels are, uh, since they are, you know, 
angels of medicine, they are going to Is it one of these. Uh, I don't know if that was an ancient one or not. Or one of those? I am not sure. But well, it, I it, looked up these amulets, and I don't. You can look. Uh, here, I'll I'll look one up. Go if you, here, I'll come up. To okay, you. he's uh he's going up there, and he is uh showing the the people. Oh, it's too blurry. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, and I, I, they can't really hear you either, uh, Ruben. But um, yeah, he's uh showing you there. There it is. That's what he he found. I don't know if that's the exact right one. However, they're they look pretty old. All right, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sure. I think that there's uh there's other ones as well. I'm not 100 percent sure. I know mine's is definitely different. Didn't look anything like that one. Well, you're a um, different guy. This one's for some other person. Uh, well, yeah, well, I get yeah. that. <laughs> All right, whatever. We'll uh we'll check that one out later if we get the get a chance to go back to it. But either way, uh, that's what these angels are for. Um, so yeah, he he says uh, to Nebuchadnezzar that these are the angels in charge of medicine. And then he tells the story of why they're the angels in charge of medicine mm. and why he is writing it on the amulet. Um, I thought the medicines were all already in the Garden of Eden and that Adam took them out of the Garden of Eden. Oh, you. All right. Uh, after God created Adam, who was alone, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. Genesis 2.18. He then created a woman for Adam. From the earth, as he had created Adam himself, and called her Lilith. Now, this is uh, where we get to it. The any single time you have ever heard uh, anyone say that uh, Lilith was the first wife of Adam, this is where it came from. This is the very first time uh, that it has ever been mentioned, ever in any ancient text, because before this. Lilith was just a class of demons, pretty much. Yeah, desert demons. Yeah, that cause night night emissions and night emissions. Yeah, like yeah, lots so of stuff. So they are literally like the succubus and incubus and the they, they were they were close hammer to of that. witches. Uh, I mean, they, yeah, they were they were approaching that mm. definitely. Um, but so they also cause like miscarriage, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, They're evil. Yeah, and they kill kill babies and mothers in labor. Um, so it's um. This is the first time that as the first wife of Adam thing pops up. Uh, it's not like left out of the Bible. This was a parody that was written almost. Uh, okay. So let's see if uh, let's assume for the moment Genesis was, was written around. Well, let's say let's say 500 or 600 uh, BC. All right. Let's say in that let's range. round it off to like. Between 500 and 1,000 BC. Okay, fine, whatever. make it easy. Okay, fine. So it's, assuming this was written like, you know, late in the geonic period, let's say around 1,000, probably a little bit earlier. I don't know. But either way, this was written like, what, 1,500 years after the actual writing mm -hmm. of Genesis. Yeah. This is a parody, so it's a joke too. Uh, so any single time that somebody says, Hey Lilith, you know they left her on the Bible. No, they didn't. Okay, the the idea that Lilith was the first wife of Adam popped up here way afterwards. This was meant to poke fun at, at all that. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing that some uh, rabbis had like their ideas about uh, about a potential first wife because there was like a there is a potential uh, discrepancy, but it's not really a problem when you consider uh, multiple authors. But whatever. Of course, um, if you read occult literature, yeah, they they they'll, just they'll tell you that she's in Genesis one. Yeah, and they'll also you know the later you go down the line, the more it changes too, because uh, the Lilith mythos changes so much the the further you go. So like when I did my video, I stopped at around the 14th century mm -hmm. because it was just it just got nuts. the The Lilith tale changed depending on who was telling it. Yeah. Now it makes a lot more sense if you look at Genesis one as like a preamble, right? Uh, there, there are multiple ways to interpret it, like Genesis one and yeah. stuff. Like some people think that it's a temple inauguration. That's what it's yeah. supposed to mean, like a seven day temple inauguration. Yeah. Uh, so th they have a lot of different uh, ideas. Um, but either way, uh, let's hop back into the story. Like a child's play, <laughs> I, I suppose. Um, so after God created, yeah, okay. So he, uh, 
Yeah, mixed from, from the earth, earth out of earth. Yes. Does he spit and breathe life into it the same way? Uh, I would assume so. Uh, I guess oh, totally different. I guess they're equals. I guess uh, they both have an equal number of ribs. Uh, yeah. Uh, as he had created Adam himself and called her Lilith. Adam and Lilith immediately began to fight. She said, I will not lie below. And he said, I will not lie beneath you, but only on top. For you are fit only to be on the bottom position, while I am to be in the superior one. Lilith responded, we are equal to each other in as much as we were both created from the earth. But they would not listen to one another. When Lilith saw this, she pronounced the ineffable name and flew away into the air. Adam stood in prayer before his creator. Sovereign of the universe, he said. The woman you gave me has run away. At once, the Holy One, blessed be he, sent these three angels to bring her back. Said the Holy One to Adam, if she agrees to come back, fine. If not, she must permit 100 of her children to die every day. The angels left and God pursued. Yeah, and God left God and pursued Lilith, whom they overtook in the midst of the sea, in the mighty waters, wherein the Egyptians were destined to drown. Ooh. 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 They told her God's word, but she did not wish to return. The angels said, we shall drown you in the sea. That's not what God told them to do. You're right. It isn't like at all. Um, in Man, fact, I, I would argue that they're going against his wishes directly. Dude, here. yes. These are just, these are the screw up angels. These are the, you know, the dunderheads that nobody <laughs> talks about because, um, they constantly beef up all their missions. The, the three the, stooges. Yeah. Three stooges. It's there like you go. when you're in an RPG and you're supposed to like bring something to someone and instead you just kill them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that we were supposed to do that, right? It's like mission <laughs> fail. Oh, no. <nope>. Uh. <laughs> Leave me, she said. I was created only to cause sickness to infants. If the infant is male, I have dominion over him for eight days after his birth, and if female, for 20 days. So let's see if there's an explanation to those uh, amounts of days. Well, of course, the eight days would be associated with circumcision. That would that one would make sense, but the twenty days I don't get. Yeah, that might have to do with the time that it takes for somebody to be pure after they're born. Remember, women at, or girls when they're born take longer for them to be pure. Mm. Sure, sure. Uh, so it's a stupid thing, but it is in the Bible. It is self evident why Lilith has no power has no power over a male baby past the eighth day, since on this day the child undergoes the rite of circumcision. But it is not clear why Lilith's power ends on the twentieth day after the birth of a female. Uh, Trachtenberg's suggestion that this may have originated in a period when the girls had an uh, initiatory had an, uh, an initiatory right on on that day lacks support in the sources. In the Oxford manuscript, the reading is twelve days instead of twenty. So maybe I don't know if that one's going to be easier or uh, less easy to explain, but uh, no, that actually makes just it just as confusing. Okay, yeah. maybe there were more female sudden infant death syndrome maybe cases yeah i don't know either way uh when the angels heard lilith's words they insisted she go back you just you just threatened her <gasps> but she swore to them by the name of the living and eternal god whenever i see you or your names or your forms in an amulet i will have no power over the infant she also agreed to have 100 of her children die every day. Accordingly, every day, 100 demons perish. And for the same reason, we write the angels' names on the amulets of young children. When Lilith sees their names, she remembers her oath, and the child recovers. So this... Um, so all demons are children of Lilith, according to the alphabet of Ben Uh, Yeah, that's what it sounds like, yeah. So, uh, this is, this is probably serving as like, you know, here's like an explanation to why we do this tradition. The tradition already existed. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's, 
uh, there's already some evidence of them doing this type of thing. Uh, otherwise, you would have to have this explanation, right? Yeah, but presumably Nebuchadnezzar would already have like I don't know court wizards or something. You'd think, but this is Ben Sira. This is the child Ben Sira. Mm. So he's obviously uh, far superior. Yeah, those wizards come in, try to teach Ben Sira something, and they get owned one too, and they're gone. They're well, just, he makes them say oy vey. No, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. They all left. <laughs> they aren't any court wizards. They all got humiliated. All right, uh, so we can hop into chapter six then. All right, hand it off to me after. Okay. Some days later, the king said to Ben Sira, I have a daughter who expels a thousand farts. Every hour. Wow. Wow. This is um, he, uh, horribly crude. Cure her. You know, Chris was worried about having like, a, like a, a proper thumbnail. Like he was all like, we don't want it to be too like, you know, nasty or anything. But no, I mean, like there's just a bunch of nude people in it. At well, least two. Yeah. And well, most of these pictures, it wasn't easy to find non-naked Lilith picture. Yeah. But so. uh, either way. We're talking about farts. Now, yeah. A thousand farts an hour. Yeah, that's impressive, and actually. Matt, <laughs> high five. She could single-handedly power the U.S. grid with her gas <laughs> emissions. Wow, that's, that's ben, global warming for you. Ben Sira replied, send her to me in the morning with her attendants, and I will heal her. Oh, God. The next morning, she came with her attendants, presumably while farting. Uh, when Ben Sira saw her, he began to act as though he were very angry. Why, why are you angry? She asked him. Your father decreed that I must expel 1,000 farts in... Wait, hold on. Your father decreed that I must expel 1,000 farts in his presence tomorrow and the following day. I am afraid he may put me to death. He gave me an extension of three days, but I still do not know what to do. Do not worry, she said. I will go into your place and expel 1,000 farts in front of him for both of us. You're so kind. Incredible. If that is the case, replied Ben Sira, stay here with me for three days and don't break wind so that the farts will be ready on the third day. You know, if, if he's requiring... How much? A thousand? A thousand. Yeah, and she farts a thousand times per hour. She's really why, gotta why, hold it in. Why would you have to save them? <laughs> nope. This is bad logic. But the, the, let's see what the daughter does. All right. She's gonna hold it. Yeah, so uh so that the farts will be ready on the third day. If you're just joining us, this is the alphabet of Ben Sira and it's a parody. Uh, <laughs> every time a fart was about to come. The king's daughter stood up on one foot and stretched her eyes wide as Ben Sira told her to do. And she contained herself and closed her... <laughs> this, this... <laughs> um, I, I don't know what the... I don't remember what the name of the subreddit is, but there's uh, like... A, a, a creepy quotes or like a misplaced quotes, unnecessary quotes subreddit. So it says, um, and she contained herself and closed her mouth. Oh, <laughs> slowly. Uh, <laughs> that that's brilliant until the breaking of wind stopped completely. After three days, no farts came out from her behind on that day. Ben Sira took her to her father saying, Go and expel 1,000 farts for your father. She stood before the king, but she was unable to break wind even once. The king stood up and kissed Ben Sira. Wow. Good job, Ben Sira. That was a horrible daughter until then. <laughs> yeah. The, the solution was hold it in. I've heard of indigestion, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Yeah, that's uh, the end of uh, that chapter. 
We can what hop into chap that we can hop into chapter seven now. Ruben, I'll hand it off to you. All right. If you guys are enjoying the stream, please drop a like uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new here, I know we are. We have in the past two weeks we've gained like a thousand subscribers. Ooh, so, uh, that's a good number. Yeah, that is a good number. So thank you so much. If share you're, it with your friends, family, neighbors, everyone you've ever met, yeah. without exception. So uh, thank you if you're uh, new to the channel, just joining us. Uh, we appreciate the. Uh, the interactions, we appreciate the likes, all that stuff. Mm. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Helps us out. Yes. So I guess I'll read the rest of it because some of these are pretty short. Yeah. Uh, so, chapter seven. He questioned Ben Sira. Why were farts created? Good, Good question. question. <laughs> <laughs> if not for breaking wind... A person would have diarrhea and defecate in his clothes. But when a person feels that he is about to fart, he goes and attends to his needs so that he will not be embarrassed and sit in filthy clothes. So uh, the answer is uh, farts exist because if they didn't, you'd uh, shit yourself. Yep. That's the end of chapter seven. <laughs> uh, wow. Chapter eight. Why are, two, why are there two hairs in each follicle on a man's body but only one hair in each of the follicles on his head. Is that how that works? <laughs> We're just like looking at our, at our guys. Need, need like that's a, not true. Yeah, yeah I don't like, think it is. Uh, you got to zoom in harder. That's all. Yeah, it's one of the, sm the smallest hairs. God created one hair for each follicle on the head. For had He created two hairs for each follicle, His two eyes would grow dim. There's a note. So, um, the, the luscious eyelashes, is, is that uh, his issue with that? And apparently, this is in B Baba Batra 16A. Oh, okay. That's all they say about it. All right. I guess uh, some rabbi had something to say about it. Yeah. The same goes for the world. Were two raindrops to come from one cavity, the world would be destroyed because there would be more water than in the flood. For every affliction, God has created the remedy with it. Fortunate are you, my son, that God revealed all this to you. Great. Yeah, great. <laughs> now we're in chapter 9. And here's a pertinent question. Okay, I'm ready. Why were mosquitoes created? They exist in the world only for a day and they perish while others are created. Good question. That's a, that's, that's a really good question. Yeah. For the sake of the one mosquito that is destined to punish the wicked Titus. Um, 39. For Titus, see B. Gitin 56B. For the ravens, B. Ketubot 49B. And Leviticus Rabbah 19.1. So, uh, I'm. Uh, so, did someone get malaria? And maybe this person was very bad and he, he's like, you know, mosquitoes exist to get rid of that one guy? Or. Was it was it a name Titus? Cuz yeah, Titus is capitalized. Okay. Go ahead and google it. Okay. If you want. I mean, like I know of, you know, uh the New Testament book uh Titus. Well, that's different, I'm guessing. I mean, it was written by then, so Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh that that would be a weird reference. Yeah. The rest were created in order to keep alive the offspring of the ravens. When their offspring emerges from the eggs and enter the nest, the parents flee and abandon them. There's a note, uh, because they're white, baby ravens do not look like ravens. Okay. Okay. Wow, but thanks. the offspring cry to God, as it is said, and to the young ravens which cry, Psalm 147, 9. And he leads mosquitoes to their mouths, which they eat and live on for three days. After these three days, the offspring turn black and their parents return. Thus, God creates the oh. remedy prior to the disease. Okay, so they're talking about the um, the emperor, Titus. Oh, uh, well, he's going to get killed by a mosquito. We've heard of Titus as well, haven't we? Uh, no. No? Is that a different guy? I, I don't think that's any guy. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> yep. I mean, maybe it's some guy, but not, no one we've talked about. Chapter 10. Why has God created in his world wasps and spiders? Also, which, 
only cause harm and do nothing beneficial. Actually, the spiders kill a lot of other mosquitoes. (laughs) Specifically. Yeah. So uh, the most uh, widely accepted view among scholars is that Titus died a natural death. He had a fever, which may have been caused by malaria. Ah, uh, see, yeah, see, we got, got him, yeah, got yeah, him. got it. Yes, yeah, so, someone died from malaria. That's uh, mm-hmm. I guess, yeah, they were dealing with this shit for uh, we've been dealing with that for a long time, huh? Yeah. Yes, apparently yeah. we uh, haven't solved that problem yet. Well, you know what? There's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, David, king of Israel, peace to him, was once sitting in his garden and saw a wasp and a spider fighting. Oh, a fool came with a stick in his hand and separated them. Uh, there's a note. Uh, uh, I mean, I would just not get involved. Okay, the translation it follows. Is a fool. Yasif's text, Stein Schneider's text reads david saw a wasp consuming a spider then a fool came and banished the wasp and the spider okay. oh do you see a tarantula hawk do you guys know what that is yes it's a bit if if the audience if you guys don't know what a tarantula hawk is they're crazy uh they are just they're not actual hawks they're they are wasps uh so basically you have a tarantula and then you have this wasp and it like goes attacks the tarantula and then it actually like stings it under its belly and paralyzes it completely. Mm. And then, you know, classic, uh, eating and laying of eggs inside of it and all that, uh, all that stuff. Ugh. They're badasses. Yeah. Are they red and black? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Said David to God, sovereign of the universe. What good comes from these creatures of yours? The wasp eats honey, ravages, and produces no benefit. The spider spins all year but never wears its web. The mindless fool harms other creatures. Unaware of your oneness and power, he does nothing beneficial for the world. Well, that's just not true. God replied, David, you deride these creatures. There will come a time when you will need them, and you will understand why they were created. For honey. Uh, for the beneficial use of folly, see Midrash Psalms 34.1. For the spider, see Targum to Psalm 57.3. So, I mean, my guess is um, the mysteries of the universe, and you have to solve them later. These are like puzzle pieces. You'll never get it yet. Oh, well, all right. Then. Yeah. Um, when David was hiding in a cave from King Saul... God sent a spider, which spun a web across the cave's opening and closed it. I don't remember that happening. <laughs> nope. <laughs> when Saul came, he saw the web and said, surely no one's gone inside. If anyone had, he would have torn the web to pieces. Saul went away without going inside. When David came out of the cave, he saw the spider and kissed it, saying, blessed be your creator and blessed be you, O sovereign of the universe, who can do according to your works and according to your mighty acts, Deuteronomy 3.24. For all your deeds are fitting. That's right. Spiders are for hiding caves when you need to hide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And in the presence and of... And how big was this hey, spider? Was it ridiculously uh, big? This is like the, uh, the Lord web. of the Rings spider. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Shelob. Okay. okay. Uh, and in the presence of Akish, David pretended he was crazy. Uh is uh, 1 Samuel 21, 11 through 16. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. And it works for him. Yeah, he's like, this is the king? Really? No way. Akish's own daughter happened to be a mad fool. <laughs> when the courtiers brought David to Akish, he said, you mock me. You've brought this one to me because my daughter is a fool. Don't I already have enough mad men? This is uh, 1 Samuel 21, 16. They immediately released David. He fled and thanked God for his deeds, saying, There is benefit in everything that he created in the world. Uh, this is Midrash Psalms 34 1. When David found Saul resting at noon, Abner was lying at one entrance to the barricade with his head at the other entrance and his legs lifted high. David came, entered between his legs, took a cruise of water. Uh, See, 1 Samuel 26, 7 through 12. But when he wanted to exit, 
Abner stretched out his legs and covered the entrance with them. They appeared to David as two large pillars, and he prayed to God, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Ah, Psalm classic. 22, too. Yeah. Yep. It wasn't Jesus. Oh. That was Psalm 22, too. Uh, but then later, Jesus. Who quoted it. Yeah. Right there, God performed a miracle for him, sending a wasp, which stung Abner in his legs, so he straightened them. David came out and praised God. So, you see, it is not proper for a man to deride God's works. Chapter 11. And that's, uh, that's the final chapter for the day. It has nothing to do with bankruptcy. I don't get that joke. Is that like a legal thing? You'd get it. Yeah. Okay. You would if you could. Okay. Yeah. All right, sweet. Nebuchadnezzar asked Ben Sira, why does the ox not have hair under its nose? Uh, good question, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's Where's a good question. Where's the ox's question. mustache? <laughs> Joshua was a stout man when the Israelites and Joshua were encircling Jericho in order to bring it down. And they brought him first a horse to ride, then an ass, and then a mule, but all of them died under him. Oh, wow. He's, he's too fat. <laughs> Finally, they brought Joshua an ox, and it managed to carry him. The probable reason for having Joshua ride an ox is the fact that the tribe of Ephraim, to which Joshua belongs, is compared to an ox, Deuteronomy thirty-three seventeen. Also, according to rabbinic tradition, the coins issued by Joshua had the form of an ox on them, Genesis Rabbah 39.11. Also, bulls are symbols of strength. Yep. When Joshua saw this, he kissed the ox on its nose, and that's why it has no hair. And that... Oh, uh, what? <laughs> uh, so, did it just come right off? I guess so. That's the end. And then that, that trait went by... Uh, w- went through many generations. Yeah, because of course. You know, before that, and you can have evidence of this in other countries where they don't have the, uh, you know that breed kind. Uh, yeah, they've got the mustache <laughs> on all their oxes. Of course. Yep. It's like Definitely. a handlebar mustache. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yep. Uh, you'll you'll learn new things every day. Uh, this this show is just uh, an incredible wealth of knowledge, especially when we read ancient parodies. And next week we will be finishing the uh, the book. Now, the week afterwards, we're going to start reading a different apocryphal book. Yes, what? I don't think we've decided yet. Well, we can we can take some time to decide. Let's see what we have. Why don't we read? Why don't we do a poll again? Read Polls that. are fun. I mean, yeah, we could do a poll. Okay, so that. for for everyone those for everyone uh, that's in the chat, please leave a you know th- some suggestions. That we can uh, consider. We we do have you know other options, but uh, we have a commentary on Judith here. Okay, Judith. That's uh, that is an option yeah. as well. We could read Judith, maybe. If you guys want us to read Judith, we could also go over like we got one in here too. Really simple ones, like short ones: Prayer, Manasseh, Bell, and the Dragon. We could probably fit a few of those really short ones into one episode. Yeah, probably. I just feel like those would be kind of weird. In one episode together? Well, I mean... Like, we would just be like... Uh, well, what do you want to do? Dedicate an entire episode to the prayer of Manasseh? I, I don't know. I mean, I feel It'd like that would be like make... five minutes long. Okay, well, I feel like that would make uh, more sense. Or maybe we can just do videos on those, like different ones, instead of... That would include the reading, but it's not like a live show. I think we'd be better off doing one episode with short apocalypse. A, a cluster. I, I suppose, yeah. And then... Okay. Yeah, we figure that out now. We can uh, probably just print those off too. We don't need a book for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, and you know, it's really hard to find uh, copies of a lot of stuff online. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a real bummer. Like I was trying to look for uh, the alphabet of Vencera online. It's like, nope, nope. You know, there's a lot of stuff too that, um, like in the rabbinic tradition, that isn't translated into English. Some parts of the yeah. Talmud. Yeah, now, the yeah. trick is you can find it in Hebrew online yeah. and then you can just copy and paste it into Google Translate and it'll be roughly accurate. So there and you it'll go. It'll be a modern uh, translation. Yep. That's how you can read the secret Hebrew things that they didn't Ooh, intend to secret. translate. <laughs> there you go. Although, although it's, you know, 
it's 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 kind of weird with Google Translate. Uh, it's not perfect. It's not. Not nearly. No. Um, but luckily, Hebrew is a language where everything's pretty exact. I mean, grammatically and everything. It's not like, you know, I mean, if it's if something's wrong, you can pretty easily tell that it was translated wrong. Yeah, there's um, and it it can get really weird in like Greek, for example, like the 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 neutral or the 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 neuter uh nouns, adjectives, whatever they may be. Like the the neuter plural, uh, nominative and accusative are the same. So whether or not it's a subject or an object, uh, it they're the same because mm-hmm. for other forms they're different. For yes. other genders, they're different. Um, and but those are also the same as like the or they very often are the same as like the singular. Uh, masculine uh, accusative, which is the object. So, like, it it can get very hard to tell sometimes how you're supposed to translate a word because it could mean a, a number of things, and the only way to do it is just the in the in context, I guess, because yeah. you have to look at, like surrounding genders and yeah. So, for context, we have commentaries on Judith. We have a commentary in here on the additions to Daniel, which we'll get to when we do Daniel. Right, right. Um, we also have first, second, Edstras. Edstras, uh, yep. We have third and fourth Maccabees, That's right. uh, Prayer of Manasseh, and I think that is everything. I mean, uh, that it should be at least a uh, Everything that's table. in the uh, Eerdman's commentary, which I reckon means that would be everything that is different between the Catholic and Protestant traditions. No, yeah, that would make sense. Um, so we are getting very close to being done with the central core of you know, Old Testament Apocrypha. Yeah, isn't that, uh, isn't that fun? Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. We're making uh, our way through these books, huh? Yeah, I mean... We've re- read quite a lot of stuff. I mean, on top of that, we also... I know you have... Um, translations the second and third Enoch. So uh, yes, yes. So uh, we. But those cover... translations are very outdated. Uh, like oh well. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, I guess we can go over the last books that are included. Probably won't take super long. I'm not really looking forward to doing third and fourth Maccabees. Me neither. Oh my god! Like we what? we we already read that story twice. Are we get, are we gonna have to read it two more times? Yeah, Apparently. and it only gets better. <laughs> This is, um, of course, these are all reboots. Of course, they are pretty brutal stories. Yeah, that is true. You get Story. to hear about how uh, Judah Maccabee would go around burning buildings with people inside of them. Yeah, classic. Gotta, gotta love it. Yeah, wonderful. We're, we're, we're uh, going to put a poll up uh, after the show mm-hmm. to see what, uh, what book we should do next. Mm-hmm. Include right. the short ones in there. Prayer Manasseh, Bell and the Dragon. Okay. As one block, because we are not doing those as separate episodes. Yeah, so there's yeah. no way. Yeah. What I are you doing? Yeah, you, we'll okay, get we'll to get shilling. to it. God damn, Chris. All right. Uh, and now for the shilling portion of the show, uh, make sure if you haven't already, drop a like, subscribe, uh, share the stream around, all that, uh, all that good stuff, because it really does help us a lot. Uh, let's see. We got a Patreon too. We yeah, got a- if you go on our Patreon, you can for one dollar a month get all of our video scripts for our scripted videos. That is a wealth of information far beyond what was lost in the Library of Alexander. <laughs> um, we also you can donate more money and get entered into a monthly T-shirt giveaway, which is always fun. We always like spinning the wheel, and you know what? Sometimes Landon doesn't win. Wow. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, if you signed up for that tier, then he'd win less. He would win less. <laughs> you, could, you could stop the land dilemma. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, also self-published books. Oh, that's uh, yep. You can get copies of those. Um, you could be on the shows. Could be on the shows. Could be in our hangouts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we ever host live events, you could get a free ticket. Yeah. Not uh, a airplane ticket. <laughs> um, after COVID's done for $10,000 a month, one of us will... <laughs> 
you know, fly <laughs> out and give you a handshake. Or high five. Or yeah, high five. Or high five. Your no choice. No fist bumps. That's Either cheap. a handshake or a high five. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we also have a Teespring if you just want to get a shirt. Uh, Chris, can you, uh, you know, do the whole merch thing? Just pick a, a shirt. Pick a shirt, any shirt. Uh, throw it on there. Um, the Rod of God Valentine's yeah, shirt. Yeah, it's Valentine's, you know, that just uh, that just passed. Yeah, if you uh, if you want to get a belated Valentine's Day gift. For get started for next your, year. For <laughs> yeah. your sweetie. Yeah, for, for next year. You can uh, buy a Rod of God Valentine's Day shirt. Yeah, yeah, it's fun, uh, fun stuff. We have plenty of other shirts on on there as well. Uh, most of them bee related. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe we should get a bee for the table. Not a real one, but like no, a real one. No, a real yeah, one would be kind of nifty, but let's yeah. just have a, a tame bee one flying around here. It's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, we uh, could uh, give it some milk and honey. Oh, yeah, yeah. We could have it start a hive inside of a lion. We could. We'd have to Guys, get a lion. that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. We already have hard things to finish. <laughs> like Accurate. our 666 drive that we're going to do eventually, but also yeah, we're yeah. still doing. And we also have another one, yep. Bucks way there to doing some... Scientology. Scientology. Yeah. We're going to be uh, checking our thetan levels. Yeah, we'll be checking that. How, what's our... Donation drive up to now, uh, somewhere around two hundred. Oh, yeah, or so. yeah, yeah, a little over two hundred. I gotta do the math. Yeah. So once we hit six six six, yeah, that's it. We you can one. follow us on Facebook and Twitter for free. Yeah, Facebook and Twitter absolutely free. It costs nothing. Why wouldn't you do it? Uh, I think that's uh, that's oh, our Amazon wish list. Amazon wish list. If you want to add books to this table so that we can. Read more books, wonderful commentaries, and and you can help us for for video scripts uh, as well, because uh, a lot of all the all the books on the the wish list go directly in back into your entertainment and into your knowledge. So yes, videos it, we read it so that you don't have to exactly. Uh, so that that should be it. Thank you for joining us, and we will. See you on Sunday and then Friday. And Friday and then as well. Maybe yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Eventually Potentially. Saturday.